who's setting off today for the top of the world again. If he's successful, he'll become just the tenth Brit ever to have climbed Everest from both sides. And he's uh, leading a party of Everest virgins on the climb of their life, too. He is Tim Mosdale, and uh, he's with me on the line. Tim, good morning. Good morning. How so, are you doing? Not so bad at all. Is this your second or third or fourth uh, trip up Everest? Oh, 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 only my second. What was the first one like? It, it was fantastic. It was with a bunch of uh, friends, uh, mostly from Cumbria, and indeed my two Everest buddies lived just around the corner. It was a very close-knit uh, group and a, a really special experience. Now, I went to Madeira for the first time this spring and, and thought, I quite like this, I'll have to come back at some point. Uh, is that the thought you had, standing on top of the world? Uh, I, I guess so, actually, yes, yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's such a special occasion and, and such a great trip that uh, it was certainly uh, in my mind that it would be, be nice to replicate it and, um, you know, to maybe have a go on the other side, which means that uh, there's something new in it for me, as well as obviously for the, the clients that are with me. Now, the highest place I've ever been in the world is on the top of Snowdon, twice, and on both occasions you could see now because the cloud had come down. Uh, what was Everest like on, on the day you arrived on top? Uh, well, we had uh, very good visibility, but uh, very quickly uh, deteriorating weather conditions. We knew that there was a storm coming in, so we only had about 15 minutes on the top. Uh, we weren't able to nip into the cafe, which is maybe what you did on Snowdon. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there was no train to get down as well, but, you know, obviously we had to get back down the hill swiftly. Um, we had a great a great time, but um, only a few hours later, um, you know, a storm was in and it was very gnarly conditions. So, is, uh, is an ascent on Everest, and, and certainly the very top bit, is it more down to luck than judgment? You really are um, at the mercy of the elements and you could have done all the planning in the world, you could have the best team, and actually you won't get to do it. Uh, I mean, partly, yes, there, there is a certain element of luck involved. You've got to be in the right place at the right time, fit and healthy, enough gas, enough food, enough oxygen. Um, but um, the weather forecasting these days is actually very, very good. So we knew that there was just an 18-hour weather window. Um, so that's why we knew that, you know, we'll get to Summit and then Scarpa. Whereas normally you'd be hoping for a four-day weather window, which means that you can go up in good conditions and come down in good conditions. Um, so we were just getting ahead of the crowd because there was this 18-hour slot and we knew that a few days later it was going to be very busy. So which side have you already done then? Which yeah. route up have you conquered? That was the, the, on the Tibetan side, the north side of Everest. So this time is the, the south side? The south side from Nepal, which is via the, the very famous uh, the South Col and the Hillary Steppe. Which of the two are you expecting to be the, the more testing? Uh, well, this will be challenging because I've got a group with me, so there's obviously a lot of different issues going on there. And they've not done Everest before? They haven't, no, but they've all done an expedition with me before, um, or and they're all very competent mountaineers. Um, so, yeah, I mean, statistically, when you look at it, much you're much more likely to summit from the south. But there's a lot of luck involved, there's a lot going on between now and the end of May, so um, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not putting my eggs in my basket at all. I've got it in my mind that this is sort of almost almost like a pyramid structure when it comes to doing a big expedition. You have 100 people working towards it. Of those 125 get to climb the mountain, um, only 10 of them get to go further than halfway, and then a lucky two or three have the ascent on the summit. Is, is that still what it's like? Yeah, I mean, that, that was more so in the sort of 70s. Um, you, you had that pyramid style of expedition to get one or two members on the top. Things have changed uh, sort of quite subtly, I suppose, now that it's um, sort of been done on a commercial basis. So, yes, there's a lot of staff, um, whereas we're hoping to get all the members on the summit, whereas in the, in the past it was, you know, the members and the Sherpas were trying to get one or two people on the summit. Um, I mean, hopefully all our climbing Sherpas will summit with us, and it would be great if the group all summit together, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. Um, but certainly, yes, there's a whole number of porters and there's yak trains and there's cook crew. And we couldn't, you know, I, I'm indebted to the people uh, that we work with because we could not do anything like this without them. They, they are fantastic. And you said um, that it's a bit commercial these days. I mean, we, we jokingly said uh, we'd pop into the gift shop at the top. Um, are so many people climbing Everest, it, it, it's almost getting like that? I, I suppose it's still limited uh, by the fact that there is a huge expense involved. And I 
think also, um, it, you know, a lot of people are put off by the fact that it is Everest um, and yet people die on the mountain. But equally, unfortunately, people are mesmerised by it. You know, the stories of Daring Do and the past history of it. Uh, and they think, oh, well, I want to be a part of it. And they might have only read a book. I mean, I, I had a phone call last night from a guy who wants to join the expedition. Never climbed a mountain, never been rock climbing, but he's good in the gym. And, he, he, you know, he seriously thinks that because he can train in the gym and that he's a nice person to be with, that he's suitable for Everest. And I'm afraid not with my group, you're not, and hopefully not with any group. So you pick your team for temperament and, and tenacity and durability, do you? Yes. Yes, I, I cherry picked from my database. Uh, anyone out there who's listening and you're on my database, if I didn't contact you, I'm a, I apologise sincerely. Uh, but no, it, it was uh, it's a case of choosing people who I thought would be right for the group, with the right skills involved, could probably get the time off work and, and had you know enough money uh, to, to sort of come along on the trip. Because not only is this a financial commitment, it is, as you mentioned, a time commitment as well. You leave tomorrow... When do you hit the summit, and then when do you get back? Uh, I, I go today, <laughs> and um, we, we get to the summit sometime in May, and our flights are booked back at the beginning of June, but if we summit early, we'll, we'll come back early. So this is good two or three months? Yeah, certainly, yeah, seven, eight, nine weeks of, of, of trip, and it's not only, um, you know, the sort of, as you say, the, the commercial aspect and, and the time off work, it's also having support from your family and your friends, and, um, you know, having those people behind emotional baggage when you're trying to go up the hill you know you've got to just clear your mind of your intray you've got to clear your mind of all those uh, complications and concentrate on the job in hand so what's the big accolade these days because lots of people have now climbed everest um fewer as we said have have done it twice mm. is there a league table for everest oh i i guess there would be if you wanted to start getting competitive there's climbing sherpas who've done it in the teens and and I think the record is 24 now. Uh, there's a Western leader, um, Kenton Cool, who's done it eight times. Uh, he's the most successful um, Brit and indeed the most successful Westerner. Um, oh, people have traversed it. They've done new routes on it. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll go to do a headstand on the summit or something like that. I'm not sure. <laughs> hey, look, you have a good time. You're going to talk to us from the top of the world, yeah? Uh, I'll try to. Uh, when we summit, I think you're off air. But uh, maybe when we get down, if I can get reception from the South Pole uh, and it's around about the same time, I'll, uh, I'll try and give you a bell. Tim, thank you very much indeed. The marvels of modern satellite technology. Hey, Tim Mosdale, who's off with that party, his second trip up Everest from the other side. They start today. We'll be